Hello and welcome back to another top 10 moments of the year video of EastEnders. And this week we are looking at the top 10 moments of 1987. That's right, we're getting through the years where all the original cast start to pitter out bit by bit and the storylines may be running dry a little bit, but I still managed to find 10 moments to top my year. So let's get going, shall we, with number 10. And that is the first time that EastEnders ever went live. That's right, it wasn't when Bradley fell off the roof or when Billy passed the Olympic torch. It was actually New Year's Eve in 1987 when the BBC went live during the episode when Den wheels out a TV to show Big Ben striking midnight. Groundbreaking television here and it had to make the top 10 just for that reason. In at number nine now, we have the Wolford football match. This was the match between the Queen Vic and the Dagmar, Dirty Den versus James Wilmot Brown before he turned evil. This episode is about football, so that's why it's so low on the list, but the shorts were 80s short shorts, so that's why it's on the list. Of course, we had all the heartthrobs of the square battling it out against each other. And of course, Dirty Den played dirty. This episode reaches the top 10, not because it's not the greatest year in 87, but because we had amazing moments like this. Oh, oh sorry, mate. You're too soft, Rip. You want to send them all off? You what? In at number eight now, we have the arrival of a mysterious new woman called Donna Ludlow, who later in the years goes on to have quite a big storyline. She is, of course, Kathy Bill's secret daughter, and she has turned up at the square hoping to set some roots in before she reveals the truth. Donna has some much, much bigger moments coming in other videos, but her arrival sparked off years worth of storylines, so I had to include her in the list. Any experience of job work? Quite a bit. Where? Well, actually, it was in Canada. I was manageress of a corner store for three years. So what are you doing back here? I'm sick. I went there with my parents when I was young. Well, I can hardly ring up Canada for references. But then being the manageress, I would have been the one to write the references, wouldn't I? I'll write you one now, if you like. I would say that I'm uh, honest, reliable, conscientious, hard-working person with a friendly disposition. In at number seven now, we have the episode where a TV documentary film arrives in Wolford to make a slice of life of London documentary out of its residence. This may be breaking the fourth wall slightly, but it's such a great episode because you get to see the characters get all giddy about being on TV, even though in real life, these characters are being watched by millions of people already. You have the likes of Lou Bill, who's just saying it how it is, no matter if a camera's on her or not. Pete, who's trying to come across as modern with updating his fruit and veg stall to sell things like pineapples and kiwis. And you have Den, who's more than happy to slag off the Dagmar, while at the same time, Angie is desperately trying to say the Dagmar's the next best thing. Sadly, Angie's bits of the documentary did get cut in the final edit, so I guess Dirty Den wins on this one too. As the governor of an old-style traditional East End pub, did you find that your business has been affected by the arrival of these newcomers to the area? This is a community pub, it thrives on its locals. Well, a pub's a pub, isn't it? I mean, ours is a bit more glamorous than most, but we've still got friendly staff and we still make the punters feel welcome. Yes, but if all the pubs in the area were refurbished like the Dagmar, surely an essential part of the East End would have vanished forever. Well, that's not so bad, is it? You've got to move with the times. What do you want, pearly kings and queens all over the place? <laughs> In at number six now, we have the moment where baby Annie is kidnapped by her own grandfather. That's right, Punk Mary's dad is drunk and disorderly, decides to steal baby Annie because he thinks he can take care of her better than his daughter Mary. And do you know what he ends up doing? Driving around the square 
and crashes into a wall. But luckily no one was hurt, apart from the boom mic when it had to pick up Punk Mary's terrifying scream. In at number five now, one of my personal favourite moments of the year is Pete Bill's birthday, where Ian thinks it's a fun idea to prank his dad, thinking that the theme for the party is that men come dressed as women and women come dressed as men. Of course, everyone is in on the joke apart from Pete Bill, who reluctantly turns up in drag, thinking that everyone else is going to be in drag too, but it turns out the joke's actually on him. And being the homophobe he is, he hates being laughed at, especially dressed as a woman. So he pushes his son Ian over and storms out of the Vic, ending on one of Pete Bill's most famous doof doofs of him crying in a dress with his mascara running all down his cheeks. I couldn't have written it better myself. I got it, Mika! <laughs> In at number four, we have the Dot and Ethel two-hander. Now, this wasn't the first two-hander of EastEnders, that goes to Angie and Den, but this is the first one to make one of our lists because it's such a great episode. We have Dot and Ethel just looking after baby Vicky, Michelle's daughter, and we just focus on them trying to babysit, at the same time learning a few things about each other, while at the same time, both of them finding out that they're each other's best friends. There's some great moments where we find out about Dot's history when her mum left her alone while she got drinking. We learn that Dot had a miscarriage in the past and we have some funnier moments where Ethel falls asleep and Dot thinks she's passed away and lost her best friend. You don't get episodes like this very often and that's why they're so special. Rolls. Oh! Can earth the matter? Oh! I thought you was... Thought I was what? I thought you was dead! I'm not ready to go yet. I've only just drawn my pension. In at number three, we have the reveal of the Wolford attacker. The Wolford attacker had attempted to chase Sharon around the Vic Gardens. He had attacked Pat, where she had to have her head shaved off and wear a wig for months. And all the blame was pointing towards old Pete Bill as being the attacker. But little did they know, it was actually just a random man in London. It wasn't a character at all. And the one to find this out was old Debbie, because she has been taking up some self-defense lessons recently, just in case she got attacked. And when she's left alone in the laundrette, this man sees this as the ideal opportunity to get a weak woman. But little did he know that Debbie is far from that. She manages to stop him attacking her and our savior Pete Bill rushes in at the last moment to act the hero. But we all know that Debbie is the real hero here. Bit empty. Yes, usually is this time of night. Nothing to do but watch the machines go round. Yes, but well, I'm off home now. Where's home? That's right. Stop. Have a chat. Don't you want to talk to me? I don't even know you. You don't want to know me? I didn't say that. Look, this is stupid. No. <laughs> I only asked if I could talk! <laughs> In at number two, we have the moment where Punk Mary leaves baby Annie alone because she's secretly on the game. 
Luckily for us, the two heroines of Dot and Ethel break into the flat and rescue baby Annie. Later on, Dot and Mary have a brilliant scene which lasts for about 15 minutes where Dot says that she will always be there to help Mary and they even have a little prayer together. This scene is really humbling and so full of character and depth that it had to be near the top. Look, you must pray with me for an answer. I want to help you, Mary, and it's the only way I know. Come on, come on, we'll kneel down together. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us miserable offenders. Restore thou them that are penitent according to thy promises declared unto mankind through Christ Jesus our Lord. We live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. And in at number one is a joint winner, I suppose, is the episode where the girls' dart team go off to face off against another pub. But at the same time, our Pat is off to meet an old flame, who some of you may remember as Frank Butcher. That's right, we have the arrival of Frank and a girls' weekend away with icons such as Dot, Ethel, Pauline, Kathy. What more could you ask for in a set of episodes? Frank gets the top spot because his arrival spurred on years and years worth of storylines and embedded Pat as that iconic character we all remember today. No, don't turn around yet, please. Did you get my letter? Yeah, otherwise I wouldn't be here, would I? What do you think? Just like that. Sorry, Frank, we've got a lot of ground to cover first. All these years and, uh, and a day gone by without a thought about you at least once. I'm afraid I can't say the same. I don't believe you. Mm, nope, I'll tell you when. Frank, we've got to face each other some stage in the game. Come here. So there you go, those were my top 10 moments of 1987. So let me know in the comments down below whether you agree or disagree with my options. Did I miss some big things out? Or should some of these things not been there at all? Let me know what you think, post your own top 10 below in the comments, and join me in the next video when we discuss the top 10 moments of 1988.